Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. In this video, we're gonna talk about parallel compression on drums. We'll start with a real quick overview of what it is, then I'll show you exactly how I set it up in one of my recent sessions, and if you're a Studio One Pro user, I'll show you how to get this exact preset into your system. Let's dive in. What is parallel compression? You probably know already, but for the kid in the back, parallel compression is where you take a track and you run it through two parallel signal paths. So we're talking about drums today. The drum mix comes through here and we hear it cleanly with no compression on it. Then we run it through another path where we put compression there, perhaps even heavy compression, and then we can hear the heavily compressed drums, the completely dry, uncompressed drums, and we can blend between the two arguably getting the best of both worlds. Now, in case you missed it, I just did a three-part series on mixing the song Somebody Told Me by The Killers. Turned out really well, super fun. The link to that playlist is in the description below. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact set of plugins that I use to achieve a really cool parallel drum sound on that drum kit. Okay, here we are inside of Studio One Professional. These blue tracks on the left-hand side are my drum tracks. These are my individual tracks, and this with the blue fader is my drum bus. I removed the plugins from the bus so we can hear what we're starting with, and then I'll show you how we can build out our cool parallel compression sound. Here's what the drums sound like so far. There's a little bit of processing on the individual tracks, but overall, sounds good, sounds fine. Nothing to write home about, but could we make this better with some parallel processing? Rather than walk you through how I arrived at this preset, which you can see in the series where I mix the song all the way through, I'm gonna show you, just go straight for the preset itself that I created. And if you use Studio One Professional, you can have this as well. Open up your browser on the right-hand side, pressing F7. You can expand it out if you want to. And these tabs across the top go to Cloud. Now this may prompt you to sign in with your My Personas account. Do that because then you have access to some really cool stuff via Personas Exchange. If I double click on that, it lets me in and there are all these places where other Studio One users such as myself are sharing different effects chains, grooves, macros, presets, sound sets, all kinds of stuff, very, very cool. So when you come into here, what I want you to do is click on the magnifying glass and search for killers. And there we go, Killers Drum Bus. So if we look down here, we can see this was uploaded by a guy named Joe Gilder. Who's that guy? He sounds smart. This is the parallel pr compression setting I use on my mix of Somebody Told Me by the Killers. It's right there. All we have to do is click Install. Yo boink. You'll see that it downloads a teeny tiny file that sets up the preset for us. And if we come over, close this window, if we come over to back to our Effects tab, which is where I have it set most of the time, we will see right here, Killer's Drum Bus is now an effects chain under this effects chain setting. In case you're not familiar, effects chains aren't just presets, they're actually a chain of different effects. As you can see, this effects chain has two versions of Fat Channel in it, and there's actually some other things going on as well. Using Studio One's infamous, or famous, infamous, famous, drag and drop functionality, let's drag this onto our drum bus to load that preset. Now you'll see there's two copies of Fat Channel. First, before I show you what's happening, let me just hit play and let you hear the difference. Uh, let me undo that, I'll hit play, and then I'll drag it on so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, aside from the fact that it made it louder, which is a dirty demo trick, I apologize, it's just the way it ended up happening. That does sound, the kick and snare sound a lot punchier, everything's a little tighter, Has a, the room sound is a little more raucous, which I think just works for a song like this. Which, by the way, the whole song, in case you're not familiar with the song, sounds like this. And that's my final drum mix sound. Now let's dive in and see what exactly is going on here so you can understand if you go to tweak it. From outside looking in, this looks like just two effects channels or fat channels in a row. One with this compressor going nuts and some EQ and then another one with this tube compressor doing something different with more EQ and that might seem like I'm just running one into the other, but I am not. If you look at this little symbol right here, this allows you to open up the routing page for this channel and look what we see. 
This is the splitter tool, one of my favorite things in all of Studio One. This allows me to split the signal any number of ways. I mean, you can go, you can go nuts with splitters. You can split, and then you can split inside a split and just go crazy. Uh, we're not going to do that. It allows me to split it a number of ways. The one we're using today is the normal split, which sends a copy of the signal, which is the drum mix, this way and also this way. And then it comes back together to go through the second plugin. So only one half of the signal is going through this fat channel. And then the signals reunite. They remerge together, Avengers assemble, and then they come down the line to whatever other plugins we might have in the chain, which includes this one. So I'm going to turn this plugin off and we're going to see what's happening here. So if I, if I click up here on this top hand side, top hand, that's not even a phrase on this top side, I can basically turn off either side of this split. So I'm going to turn this one off by literally breaking the connection. And we're going to listen to what's happening here. Here it is without any processing. And here's the processing we put on there. Now, you don't have to be an expert at mixing to realize that that's got some there's something happening there. There's, there's a lot of processing going on there. Here's what I did. A little bit of a high pass filter, really aggressive on the FET comp. I've got all the buttons in using this button right here. So all the buttons are in. We're going nuts with this compressor. Uh, and then I took out some mid range and boosted at 4.8K to increase some snappiness in both the kick drum and the snare drum. So here it is without anything. Here it is with that compression. Sounds pretty cool. And then here's some EQ on top of that. Took away any mid-range kind of resonance ringing that's there and just made it very in your face, snappy with a little bit of punch. But most of the punch isn't there. Every time I say punch, it makes me thirsty. Okay, now let's compare that to the other side. We can disconnect this side, okay? By clicking right here. And then we can click over here to reconnect the dry side. So this is the dry signal here. Very clean, there's not any real compression happening. And then the other side. What we gain with all that heavy compression is all the cool stuff that's happening to the snare, all the kind of squished energy that's there. But what we lose is some punch in the low end. Listen to how there's really no like chest thumping hit of the kick drum anymore. The kick drum is snappy, which is great. It's doing that tick, tick, tick thing, but it's not doing the whoom, whoom thing that we want out of a kick drum. Whereas if we go back to the dry, unprocessed, uncompressed mix, we get a little more punch out of the kick drum. Sounds like a basketball for a second. Um, so you get some kick and some punch out of both the kick and the snare drum. I want the best of both of those worlds. This is where we combine the two and we get this. If you focus just on the kick drum, we're getting punch, a nice boom, boom, boom out of the kick. We're also getting all that tick, tick, tick snap out of it as well. And the snare just sounds beautiful. It's in your face. Great. Then what I did is I processed that sound like I would normally with another fat channel. No splitter this time, just processing it a little bit with a little extra compression, a little extra EQ just to kind of round out the sound. This one, I, re I thought it didn't have quite enough low end to it. So I used this low shelf at 220 hertz to bring back in some of that low end. And here's what the final sound sounds like. Now that plugin adds a little bit of volume and it just kind of glues things together a little bit more with that little tiny bit of compression that's happening and then taking away a little bit at 360 and boosting the, all the lows gives me a little more low end than I was getting with the other fat channel. Now let's see what happens if I turn the first fat channel off, meaning there's no parallel processing, it's just this final plugin. It's too plain Jane. The snare drum just sounds like a snare drum in a room which isn't necessarily bad, but for something like this, that's a pretty heavy rock track. I mean, listen to that in the mix. You're not going to really hear the snare very well at all. I mean, you hear the snare back there going like, wah, 
wah, you hear the back end of the sound of the snare, the kind of the low end part. You don't hear that snappiness up front. And increasing the volume won't help much. We need compression to kind of tighten up the dynamics and get it to stick forward. That's where that parallel compression comes in. We kick that back on. We turn on our parallel processing. Now listen. You get just enough of that snap of the snare drum coming through, and it's delightful. Here it is with and without one more time with just the drums. I don't use parallel processing on all my drums all the time, but if there's a situation where I want to go aggressive with the compression, but that's too much, but I like what it's doing, then I'll do parallel compression. I get the dry drums coming all the way through and then the severely compressed drums coming through the other side and then I can blend between the two. I can even come in here and adjust the volume with these little mini faders here if I want to, but I like to do that just on the plug-in level to kind of match things up. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. If you liked this video, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check the description below for more links to more great content here on the Personas channel. All right, that's it for me. See you in the next one.